www.stemplotsfromhere.com. Today we're going to be talking about stem plots. We're going to talk about stem plots because they're another kind of visualization. Well, what sets them apart from other kinds of ways that you could visualize a distribution? Um, what do they look like and how did we construct one? I should say up front that stem plots aren't frequently used but they are sometimes used in tests and in classes, and they're frequently uh, mentioned in textbooks, which is why I'm covering it in a lesson. Um, but if, uh, if you're working with very, very large data sets, stem plots won't be very useful to you. So um, if you're actually trying to work with data, you might want to just skip this lesson. All right, so what sets stem plots apart? Well, let's think about this. When we look at data sets, those rows and rows and rows of data, um, they include the exact values, but it doesn't show us the distribution visually. I mean, it's almost impossible to actually see the distribution. The nice thing about dot plots and histograms is that it shows you the distribution visually. You could see the shape. You could sort of see the center and the spread, how, how spread out it is. Um, but unfortunately, they don't always show the exact values. Um, sometimes dot plots do, but only if you have very, very small number, uh, small range. Uh, stem plots are a way of grouping values, yet it includes the exact values. So it's sort of nice. It's like um, between the dot plot and the histogram. You could group them together, bin them together, but you could still see the exact values. And it shows you the distributions visually. So what do stem plots actually look like? Well, here's our first example. Um, they're also called stem and leaf plots. Um, the stems are really the tens digit and the leaves are actually the ones digit of your, um, of your data, right? So let's take this class. Let's say it's a physics class and here are the test grades for all these people. And um, I've put it already in order from the least to the greatest. So a couple of people are really doing poorly in this class. I actually like more than half, but um, these people are, are doing sort of well, but they're, they seem to be a minority. Um, let's look at it on a stem plot. On a stem plot, we put the tens in one column, right? So the tens that we have are two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And here are the ones numbers. So what I've taken, I'll put it in a different color, is I've taken this number and I've split it apart into two and zero. Now I look at the next set. There are three people who scored um, in, their, in the 30s. Oh, but I'm missing one of them. And so it, it should be a 0, a 7, and also an 8, right? Now let's look at all those people who scored in the 40s, which looks like this is the majority. So I would put the 0, the 0, the 2, the 2, the five, the five, the eight, and the eight, right? And then let's look at those who scored in the 50s. There's one person who scored 50 and one person who scored at 52. And then 67, so I put the six here and the seven here. For the 70s, there's three people. So I put the two, the seven, and the eight, the ones places. And for the 80s, there's two people, the 0 and the 8. And for the 90s, there's just one person who got a 97. Now, when you look at the stem plot, um, to read each of these values, you can't read this as 3,078. You have to read it as a 30, a 70, uh, I mean, sorry, a 30, a 37, and a 38, right? And this is a 40, a 40, a 42, 42, 45, 45, 48, 48, right? And when you look over here, you could see a distribution. And if you imagine tilting this over on the side, you would see that this is a right skewed. distribution. All right, so that's what the stem and leaf plot looks like. 